Thank you for tuning in to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Whether you're listening during your commute, while working out, or just relaxing at home, we appreciate you. Every download, every listen, and every subscription means a lot. Up next, the 12 Kyle podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for subscribing to the latest edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Man, check this out. (laughs) On this episode, what I want to talk about is two words that I really hated for an entire year. And the words, even when I hear them to this day, it evokes some type of emotion. The two words are, hey, puppy. That's right. Hey, puppy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why would you be bothered by the two words, hey, puppy? I heard those two words way more than I ever want to ever hear again in my life. So let's go back. It's the fall of 1991, and I'm enrolled as a freshman at South Carolina State University. And on the campus uh, where I was playing football as well, um, I was known as Hey Puppy. Well, that wasn't my name, but you follow what I'm saying here. If you did not know, (laughs) our school mascot is the Bulldog. And what happens to bulldogs before you can quote unquote officially become a bulldog, you have to go through a process, if you will. And the process involves probably what we would call now as hazing. Um, But before you could become a bulldog, you were a puppy. And subsequently we were on this thing called puppy line. That's right. Imagine being in a fraternity or sorority for that matter. And you're given these instructions. You have to do certain things. You can't go anywhere. And if you're by yourself or get caught by yourself, it could be grave consequences. So I want to peel back the curtain a little bit and talk a little bit about some of the things that happen in the fall of 1991 and why I hate the two words, hey, pup. So I get to South Carolina State that summer. We have summer camp. And the first day of camp, they tell us, like, they, they, they say, hey, all of the freshmen, after this was after practice, we're in this dorm. They say, hey, all the freshmen come to the auditorium of the, um, to, to, to the main lobby of, on the third floor of Mitchell Hall. And so we're like, all right, cool. So all of the freshmen, and it's about, we're probably about 40 deep. And they have us in this room. And they said, all right, everybody line up from shortest to tallest. And so, and now keep in mind, we don't know anything that's going on. And they say, okay, you are all, I'm going to give you a number. One, two, three, and they they count, we count all the way down. And I was number one. (laughs) because <laughs> I was the shortest one. Actually, I don't think I was the short. I think B-Love was probably shorter than me, but shout out to B-Love. Um, I wonder, I hope B-Love's not in jail. <laughs> but that's another story for another day. Shout out to B-Love. Um, nonetheless, so they tell us that night, after our parents have long gone and dropped us off, that we are now on puppy line. We are now being subjected to the process of You have to prove yourself before you can become an official bulldog. And so they laid out a bunch of ground rules. The rules were uh, you had to wear a white T-shirt and jeans. Now, keep in mind, folks, this is Orangeburg, South Carolina in the summer. So it is literally probably about 100 degrees every day. (laughs) So um, this is August. So it's 100 degrees every day. So we got to wear a white T-shirt and jeans and a tie. And the white T-shirt can't have any writing on it. 
and the tie has to be tied around your neck. It didn't matter what kind of tie, but it had to be a tie. Now, keep in mind that if you have on a white T-shirt, there's no collar, right? So you had to just tie it around your neck. And you could not talk to girls. And you could not be seen talking. Well, you could not be seen talking to girls. And you could not. Well, let me, let me, let me back up. You could talk to girls only if one of the upperclassmen gave you permission to talk to a girl. You could not walk on the sidewalk. Anywhere you walked, you had to walk on the street and you could not walk on the grass either. And last but not least, you could not be found alone anywhere on campus by yourself. If so, you would get your head cut. You would get your hair cut, excuse me, bald. And possibly your eyebrows as well. And now that may not sound like a lot for you guys right now, but in 1991, nobody had a bald head but Michael Jordan. And he might have been one of the seven people in the world that had a bald head. So having a bald head in 1991 was not the thing to do. So they tell us that we're on puppy line. And so now we're, we have to dress, you know, which is clearly hazing at this point. We have to dress in white t-shirts and the t-shirts can't have any writing on it and jeans in the summertime. Keep in mind, we have to do this until the first game of the season. The first game of the season is damn near two months away. And the first three weeks that we spent on campus, there were no other students on campus. There were no girls on campus. So we were there before everybody else because this was camp. And so any time and the last rule was any time a upperclassman told you to do something, you had to do it. So that means if your upperclassman told you to dig up your nose and stick it in your ear, you had to dig up your nose and stick it in your ear just to appease them. If they told you to <laughs> dance and twerk like a Luke dancer, you had to do it. Um, fortunately, we didn't have to. If they asked you to um, sing and serenade a young lady, you had to do that as well. So the way that they would contact us was you'd be walking around and all of a sudden you hear upper class and say, hey, puppy, hey, puppy, come here, puppy. Like nobody called you by your name. You were a puppy. And it didn't matter if you were a, a freshman that was talented. It didn't matter if you were a freshman that wasn't that good. Everybody got called puppy. And so imagine walking around and then somebody says, hey, puppy, get my, go get my pads from the equipment room. You don't know who he's talking to. He could be talking to you. He could be talking to the guy next to you. And so, oh, let me tell you the other thing that used to piss me off. Okay, so we would go to practice and you come out of practice. Now, now here's the thing. The puppy line didn't exist when we were in the locker room or on the practice field. Didn't exist. So you were back to be <laughs> you were back to being a civilian, right? And so you could kind of move maneuver around. You you had some privileges or whatever. But once you left the locker room for once practice was over, it was back to being a puppy. So if you walked and oh, that was another thing too. I'm sorry, another another rule. You couldn't be in a car, you couldn't drive a car. You could be in a car, but most upperclassmen didn't give you a ride. So you could be in a car, but you could not uh drive yourself. Very few of us had cars anyway, because we were freshmen. Um, but you couldn't you, and you couldn't walk on the grass. If you were caught walk, walking on the grass or walking on the sidewalks, uh, you would get your hair cut. <laughs> so we had to, they, they treated us like dirt, right? And this is interesting because if you were a freshman playing football, your senior year of high school football was just a year ago. So you were really, really dope for you to be playing college football. And so you go from being the man in, at your high school to now being subjected to these primitive ideas of uh, being adopted into a football fraternity. But this is what the plan was. And you couldn't complain about it because every class went before that came before you did the same thing. So you don't want to be no punk, right? So, you know, Hey Puppy got called a lot. So imagine you've, you've gone to practice. It's a hundred degrees. You practice 
And now we get, we've got what they call two a day. So you have a practice in the morning and a practice in the afternoon. So you, you've gone through the morning practice. You made it. You made your way to the cafeteria. You're getting ready to sit, sit down and get something to eat. And somebody says, hey, puppy, go get me some, uh, go get me some Gatorade. You had to literally get up. I mean, like, it didn't matter if you were eating your food. You had to literally get up and go get that upperclassman some Gatorade. He said, if somebody said, hey, puppy, go get me some eggs. You had to go get them some eggs. If he said, hey, puppy, uh, <laughs> go get me some orange juice. You had to do whatever they told you to do, right? And so this went on for the better part of two months. And when I tell you it was hell, it was hell. I, it's funny looking back on it now. And I do remember one instance where um, <laughs> a, a, a former team, well, excuse me, a teammate of mine who shall remain nameless, nameless Calvin Colson. <laughs> we came into a room and he said, hey, can anybody sing? And so I looked around. I said, yeah, I can sing. And so he said, come here, come here, come here, puppy. I was puppy number one. So he said, hey, puppy number one, come here, come here. He's like, sing something for me. So I sang Let's Chill by Guy. Easy song to sing, right? And I thought I was getting props for being able to sing Let's Chill. And so later on that day, so he, so he, he listens to me. He's like, okay, okay, you're good. And so he's like, go get back in line. So I get back in line. So later that day, we had a meeting at the front of the campus. And we're walking through. And by this time, the girls on campus, every, all the students are on campus. And we had these two twin dorms at the front of the campus, um, Bradham Hall and Manning Hall. And, and we had to walk in between the, 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 those two dorms to get to our meeting. And so as we're walking through, or shall I say stomping through, because <laughs> they had us doing steps like we were in the military, uh, all the girls start coming out of the dorms. And they're hanging out and some are out of the window. Some of them are on the steps. Some of them are just chilling. and so. Calvin says, hey, puppy number one, come here, come here. See that girl over there? What you go sing to her? I can't tell him no. And so I go over to the young lady and I sing, let's chill. And she's blown away. She's like, I mean, she wasn't about to faint or anything, but she was enjoying, you know, uh, my, my serenade. Um, I was a little bit embarrassed, but I did the song and I moved on. And so... <laughs> According to the upperclassmen, you know, when you're on puppy line, it gives them a chance for the young ladies to recognize you and for you to get props. I don't know if and when this was going to happen because it didn't feel like it because it felt like we were humiliating ourselves, but it worked. <laughs> um, but puppy line was was different. It was different. And and I, I distinctly remember one day uh, my fellow freshman brothers, uh, they left, they left the calf and they were headed to, um, practice to the, to our uh, facility. And they left the locker, they left headed to the locker room. I don't know why I was behind. Right. And so I just ate my food and I left and it didn't dawn on me until I got outside. Like I'm really out here by myself. <laughs> and not only was I out there by myself, but I was walking on the sidewalk and it didn't even dawn. I mean, like I wasn't even thinking I was just trying to get to the stadium and I see a, 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 a black car pull up beside me and a window and with a really, really dark smoke tent, tinted windows, the window rolls down and it's an upperclassman. And he said, Oh, puppy number one, you out here by yourself. Oh man. And you on the sidewalk. He's like, come to one room one Oh five tonight at 10 o'clock. So I'm like, man, I got to go to this room. So I go to the room that night and they cut my hair. They didn't cut my eyebrows, but they cut my, I, I literally had a bald ass head. Um, and it wasn't cool. And, and I mean, like I could rock a baldy, but I mean, listen folks at the time, Oh, that was a, another thing that we couldn't do as freshmen. As puppies, you couldn't have facial hair. None. So the first day, they cut your mustache and they cut your beard. Now, me, young 12 Kyle, I didn't have much of a mustache. In fact, my mustache was very, very similar to 
uh, a football game. I had 11 hairs on one side and 11 hairs on the other side, <laughs> like offense and defense. Um, so no, I, so I had to do that. So I, so I'm, so now I don't have any facial hair and now I got a bald ass head. My face looks, my head looks like a melon. And so I wasn't happy. <laughs> I wasn't happy. I was ready to fight, but you know, you couldn't do anything. It was like, what, what was I going to do? Fight the whole team. So nonetheless, uh, you eventually get to, uh, the first game and by the first game you're off puppy line and you officially become a bulldog. Um, still a very traumatic experience for me. Uh, <laughs> and I only thought of this because, um, shout out to the homie Rodis, Rodis Live podcast. Rodis was talking about his freshman year at uh, Jackson State, and uh, this definitely inspired me to talk about this on this episode. Um, but I tell you what, let's take a quick commercial break, and on the other side of the break, I'll tell you what happened beyond puppy line because just because you became a puppy doesn't necessarily mean life got any easier sit tight we'll be back in just a second are you feeling nostalgic for the golden eras of rap and soul music if so tune in to the rap soul podcast we are your weekly journey through the 80s 90s and 2000s spotlighting the music and the hidden gems that shaped the soundtrack of our lives from the powerful beats to the soulful melodies. We bring you the best of the past with fresh insights and stories. Rediscover the music that defined a generation. Subscribe to the Rap Soul Podcast and enjoy the vibes. And just like that, we are back. Once again, it's your boy 12 Kyle. This is the 12 Kyle Podcast. And we're talking about Hey Puppy. <laughs> my life and time as a, as a freshman at South Carolina state university. Um, yeah, I gave you the football side, but let me give you the, the real side of, of college, particularly for a freshman. Um, one thing that you had to do was, um, you had to adjust just to be on, you had to adjust to being on campus. Um, no longer were you at home with mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, or whomever, uh, your brothers and your sisters. Now it's just you. Uh, anything that you need, you have to get. Um, anything that you want, you have to get. Um, and I think like one of the biggest things that I learned was everything has balance. You have to have balance in no matter what you do. And you can't have more of one thing than you do the other thing. And for us and me in particular, it was about balancing the three B's books, ball and babes. And they were never in that order. <laughs> sometimes the babes came first. Sometimes the ball came first. Um, I don't really know. Well, books probably came first, probably right before I graduated, but yeah, the three B's and you know, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't, I can't really say it was that much harder than any other thing. But it was just having the focus because um, each required a certain amount of attention. Ball was the thing that got you there, at least for the most part. Now, ball was the thing that I wanted to do. And I didn't have any aspirations to play in the NFL or anything like that. But I enjoy playing football and I enjoy competing at the highest level. Um, the books uh, were definitely an adjustment. And the reason why I say that is because like, particularly your freshman year, my freshman year, I spent my freshman year taking a lot of classes in subjects that I didn't particularly care for. You had to take your general studies um, classes that are, you know, part of the curriculum for the school. And I didn't like those classes <laughs> at all. I mean, like my major was marketing. Shout out to Belcher Hall um, School of Business. Uh, but that was my major. My major was marketing. So why did I have to take a biology class? <laughs> biology sucks. <laughs> Why do I need to know about uh, protons and neutrons if, if I'm going to be a, 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 a marketing guru? I don't need to know that crap. <laughs> so, but that was a part that was like one of the classes that I had to take as far as like your general studies that helps you progress towards your degree. So books was always interesting. Um, you know, it, it's, I tell people all the time, like, 
I don't sugarcoat things. I did very well in the classes in the school of business that I liked. I did very well in my marketing classes. Everything else, it was really hit or miss. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Like one semester, um, I got, it, it wasn't my freshman year. It was like maybe like my sophomore, junior year. I got an F in psychology. <laughs> and listen, before you start laughing, like how did you get an F? I didn't go to class. Like I just, I didn't go to class. I hated the class. And it was, it's not like psychology is a hard subject. No disrespect, but it's not a hard subject, right? But I didn't go to class. So I ended up getting an F, right? And so I took the class over and got an A. So the A replaced the F, but it's a waste of, you know, I wasted time. Um, so if I had to do it all over again, particularly the, the puppy year, if you will, I would, um, I would definitely would have attacked the books a little bit harder. Not saying that I didn't work, but I didn't work particularly that I know for a fact I didn't work as hard as I probably could have. Um, then the third B, the babes. <sighs> girls, girls, girls. Where do I start? Um, I guess really you could probably divide the girls up into sections. Um, there's the girls that you liked. There's the girls that liked you. And then there's the ones that you're just friends with. Um, I'll start with the latter. The the girls that I was just friends with, they were some of the coolest ever. I, I, I say this all the time, and, and I really and truly mean it. And I can't speak for other HBCUs, particularly in the 90s. But I will say this. At South Carolina State University, I became friends with some of the coolest girls on the planet. And I didn't want nothing from them. <laughs> and they didn't want nothing from me. It was the cool, it was the probably the last era of having a down ass plutonic friend that you weren't the least bit interested in. And they weren't the least bit interested in you. And it was cool. It was it was love. Um and then there were the ones that you liked. Uh what can I say about the girls that I like? I, I will I'll give you this story, right? And I'll withhold names. So I'll I'll give you a fake name. Cause well, I'm sure she'll she'll never hear this. <laughs> if she does, the hell with her. Um, I remember my puppy year, my freshman year. Um, they well, here's the thing: we used to they used to call us crabs too. Like, but I I don't like saying crabs. But they would because as freshmen you'd be called crab until you got some hours. I don't know where crab came from, but Rodis talked about that. If I think that was the name of Rodis's episode, his crab life. Um but I, I'm going to call it puppy. So my puppy year, um, I distinctly remember the first semester, there was a girl in my English class, um, Dr. Robinson's English class, shout out to Dr. Robinson, um, who could not pronounce my name for, <laughs> for whatever reason. My last name is Dowling. He would call me Dooling every day. Um, and I just got tired of correcting him. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I like this girl and, She's in my class. Her name is Stephanie. So I like Stephanie. So me and Stephanie, we're on the phone and stuff. We're talking um, on the, the phone in our dorms, not our cell phones, because there were no cell phones, kids. Um, and so I'm liking Stephanie. I think she's real cool. And um, I distinctly remember there was a, we went to a party. And we went to a party. And I remember I was standing on the wall at the party. and. My homeboy, let's call him Reggie. <laughs> Reggie walks in, and me and Reggie are chopping it up. And I see Stephanie on the dance floor. And I'm like, oh, and I'm I'm looking at her. She's kind of looking at me, and we're kind of making these googly eyes or whatever like that. And then she turns around or whatever. And so I elbow my boy, Reggie, and I'm like, yo, Reg. I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm moving in on that one right there, man. I'm moving in on that one. And I'm thinking, like, I've been putting in this time on the phone and everything. You know, I walked through the class a couple of times. Like, I'm, I'm courting, like, because that's what I know what to do, right? And <laughs> Reggie leans over to me. He's like, her? He's like, Stephanie? I said, yeah. He's like, oh, man, I smashed her two weeks ago. What? <laughs> you did what? He's like. We, I slept with her two weeks ago. Listen, 
I was crushed. <laughs> and listen, I wasn't on the ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. Because I was trying to set her up to be my girl. And when I found out the homie smashed, couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And I, I think, this is just my theory, I really and truly think that um, <laughs> to this day, I think she turned around on the dance floor because she saw Reg talking to me. I really and truly think that. And now keep in mind, she didn't owe me anything. She didn't owe me an explanation. She wasn't my girl. I was setting it up for her to be my girl, but I was, you know, macking and hanging on the phone with her and stuff. So I was a little disappointed. Well, actually, I'm not, I was crushed. <laughs> so, and I never, here's the funny thing. I never told Reg like I was feeling her like that. I was like, yeah, Reg, I'm moving in on that. He said, oh yeah, he's like, man, you can get that. Man, I smashed. And I was like, what? I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah, man. It's like, you know, two weeks ago. Yeah. And, and he gave me, he told me like where they were and everything. <sighs> so I was like, oh, well. <laughs> and what's funny is like, I've seen, I've seen Stephanie over the years. I almost slipped up and called her name. I've seen <laughs> Stephanie over the years and she will not speak to me. And, and I don't speak to her either. I, I stopped speaking to her probably shortly after that semester. And she told a mutual friend, like, I don't understand why Kyle won't speak to me. And I haven't spoken to her. And it, well, here's the thing. I was upset back then, but then I just kind of, I just, when I would see, her, I just wouldn't speak. And so now some 30 years later, if I saw her, I mean, like I would speak now, but I don't even know if she would speak back. Cause she, <laughs> she probably felt like I was being an asshole. Um, so yeah, there's the girls that you like. And then there's the ones that like you. Cause sometimes girls like you and you ain't feeling them the same way. I'm, and, and I had that happen a couple of times in my puppy year. And without <laughs> going into any detail, I'll just say this. There, there were two that I can think of that liked me, but I didn't really like them like that. And, you know, I just figured out like, it'd probably be cool for me just to be cool with them and not lead them on. And I was upfront and honest, but like, I don't think they got the hint. So I just stopped talking to him. <laughs> I stopped talking to him. Um, and nothing happened. I just, it never got the first base. So it was what it was. Um, another thing that you have to do and thing that I, I struggle with and I'll be honest with you guys, I struggle with from time to time was just doing everything and going everywhere. You can't do everything and go everywhere um, in your freshman year. You just can't. But I tried and I damn near succeeded <laughs> because like every party, we were there. Like, and here's the thing, like I had friends, homies, cats that I played ball with who were like, party animals so anytime you said party they were there they were like all right it's up let's go and so we didn't we didn't say we didn't turn down many parties we didn't say no to a lot of stuff um i didn't drink or smoke at the time well i still don't smoke but i, I didn't drink in college so um it was easy for me to say let's party and just have a good time because i had always had a good time and i didn't need alcohol to have a good time now, all of my teammates spoke and drank, but, you know, that was cool with me. I didn't care. Um, but I, I did a lot. I partied a lot, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, in closing, I think the obvious thing that I didn't talk about that I want to leave you guys with was how you handle things back home. Because here's the thing, kids. There was no Internet. so. When you left for college, you left a lot of things back home. You left mom and dad at home. You left, at least for me, I left mom and dad. My parents were divorced by then. My brother was back at home. My little brother, younger brother, he's three years younger than me, my sister. Um, and my friends, uh, all of my friends, we all went to different colleges. So in South Carolina State is 90 minutes. So it was an hour and a half from where I grew up in Florence, South Carolina. So Orangeburg and Florence aren't close, but they aren't far away either. So I could easily get home if I needed to get home and they could come and get me if they needed to come and get me. 
but they also weren't going to just pop up on me either. So, um, so how you handle things back home. So even something as simple as checking in with my mom, you know, I would call collect shout out to the collect phone call. I would call collect on Sundays and we talk, we wouldn't talk long, but you know, and that's the thing, like I, I never, <laughs> I probably could ask her now, but I never asked her how much she worried or if she worried at all, you know, about, cause we didn't talk. It's not like, you know, when my, my oldest two sons went to college, you know, I, the cell phone called or text away. So I'm not, I mean, I miss them cause they're not in the house, but I don't have the same feel as if I dropped them off and <laughs> didn't see or hear from them for another, I don't know, 30 days. Like it was that kind of time frame. So we would, t- we would, uh, we, we would, we would talk on the phone briefly. Um, I would call collect and talk to my brother. For me, the biggest thing to maintain uh, that I worried about was my friendships because again, all of my friends went to different schools and I have a very unique and very close set of friends. So like I worried about those relationships. Um, and if I couldn't maintain those relationships, I don't know how things were going to be because I didn't know how good I was going to be as far as making friends at South Carolina state university, because I truly feel like I had enough friends in life before I ever set foot on that campus. Now I will say this much. I've met some people and gained some friends, brothers and sisters who, you know, will be with me my lifetime and the next lifetime. Uh, And I'm very thankful for them. And I didn't envision that. Uh, I don't know that you can, you know, when you're starting out as a, as a, as a freshman, as a puppy (laughs) on the yard. But um, that was very important to me for those friendships to still be intact. And they were, Uh, and we did whatever we could. We wrote letters, you know, from time to time, Uh, from time to time, we, we call each other when we could. Uh, and you know, we always look forward to the holidays because we knew everybody was going to be home. And, you know, we had a couple of homies go to the military, but for the most part, we all went to different colleges. And so it was always good to get back together with the crew. So for me, if I could maintain the crew, everything else would be cool. As long as I didn't leave, lose my friends. Cause I, I could, in my mind, I could lose anybody else I went to school with as far as friendships. Cause those friendships didn't really matter as much. I didn't really want to lose my crew. Um, but yeah, those are the things you, you dealt with back home. And, you know, ultimately, uh, I eventually, <laughs> by the end of that time frame, um, found somebody to start dating and it started a relationship. And I'll tell you guys about it on another podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for checking out this edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every week, every Thursday, every Sunday at midnight. Uh, We also have a new venture, a new baby. It's called the Rap Soul Podcast. Wherever you're listening to this podcast is the same place where you can find the Rap Soul Podcast. The Rap Soul Podcast is the intersection of rap and soul music from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Uh, Be sure to tap in for that. If you love music like I do, tap in. You will hear great music conversations over there. Um, We're on YouTube here and there. Uh, Make sure that you check out and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, The great thing about the YouTube channel is that we have both audio and video for those who want to see that. Uh, Hit us up on social media at 12 Kyle at 12 Kyle podcast across the board, Twitter X, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, threads and the tick tock. Uh, if you want to contribute to the show financially, hit us up cash out dollar sign T W E L V E K Y L E. As well as if you look in the description box, there is a link that says merch, click that link and you will get, you will, you can purchase, excuse me, uh, 12 Kyle podcast, t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs like the one that I'm showing right here for the YouTube audience. Appreciate you. Uh, Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. I'll catch you guys next time. 5,000. Cheers.
Thanks again for listening to this episode of the 12 Kyle podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and share this podcast with a friend who needs the 12 Kyle podcast in their life. Every listen, every download, and every share helps us grow. Thanks for being a part of the 12 Kyle podcast community. We appreciate your support. We will catch you next time. 5,000.